This one's written by Tim Minear, my old friend. He's he's my favorite. And uh, then James Whitmore Jr. directed this one. He's like an old school Buffy guy, like early seasons. But uh, we haven't seen him in a while. And this is only episode of Angel. His Buffy episodes were as follows. I only have eyes for you. Dead Man's Party. Beauty and the Beasts. Gingerbread and the Zeppo. OK, some pretty good ones. Solid ones. Yeah. I only have eyes for you and the Zeppo were probably his best works. Um, But uh, yeah, uh, let's let's hear what you thought of it. I like gingerbread. What's I only have eyes for you? Can you say that? Oh, you love that one. You love that's John Hawks. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's a good. I like gingerbread. That's a, I feel like those are about equal. What was like no. the third one you said? Uh, Dead Man's Party, Beauty and the Beasts. Oh yeah, I don't like that one as much. Yeah, Beauty and the Beast is no good, but Dead Dead Man's Party is fun. That's the one where Pat dies. You love that. You love the party. <laughs> those guys waiting on the phone. I do. I really. do. That's your favorite this. thing. That was yeah. crazy. But. All right, so Angel. By the way, I say reprise. Reprise, you say? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I say like they reprise their role. Maybe it is reprise because it's supposed to be a play on the episode of Buffy Surprise. Oh, interesting. Because it ends with like Angel having sex and then waking up in, in like a thunderstorm. It's exactly the what they didn't. Wow, surprise. I never caught on to that. Mm-hmm. That that's what that was. Okay. Yeah, I would go rip reprise okay well, all right i'm not trying to change uh all right i'm sorry about all the chewing is it really annoying no i mean no okay. and honestly if you want me to i could try to cut some of it out but i feel like we mentioned it enough times so we might as well keep it in there yeah I, 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 don't, I don't think it is i mean okay i don't know it won't happen again i promise and it's pro- also it, everything i'm hearing the listeners are hearing me talk over it. like i'm hearing probably more than they are also because i'm only hearing you I'm not also hearing myself, you know? Yeah, true. I don't know. But all right. Anyway, anything else on the writers, directors? No, no. Let's get into it. Same day? Same day? What do you mean same day? Same day as Buffy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because uh, I don't know. I guess we haven't gotten to when they changed days. You said that was going to We had we, That happened one time. But I, yeah, yeah, I guess that's... It's, it's going to start more next year because they Buffy moves to a different network. So now they're on different networks. They're opposing each other. Oh, my goodness. Not that they weren't on at the same time ever though, right? No, no, that that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Such surely. a stupid move. <laughs> yeah. So Angel, he's like walking in a dark alley, goes in a room. There are a bunch of goats. I don't yeah. know how that happened. But there's some some men in a circle doing a sacrifice. Apparently, Wolfram and Hart. One of these dudes, one of these dudes is Buffy writer David Fury. Whoa. Yeah. I got to go back and check that out. He's the more gingery. He's like the, the bigger one. Bigger one. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually going to go check that out. So yeah. Stephanie, we he, he, follow- he's in like two other episodes. He plays like three different roles over the course of Buffy and Angel. This is his uh, first one. This is his, the first time he's on screen. Yeah. Sweet. He doesn't. Does he Does he have a speaking role or I just have to look out for him? He has a singing role at one point. <laughs> but in this episode, he doesn't say anything. I just have to. No, no, he has. He ha- no, he has lines. Oh my goodness! All right, yeah. that's really cool. So, he, wait, they, did he write this episode? No, he had nothing to do with this episode. Whoa, it, yeah. that's even cooler. Actually, they brought him in. So, we a little update on Stephanie, right? That eyeball is no longer on her head. That we fixed it. Yeah, but the family's being a little bitch about it. Yeah, especially fucking Steve. Dad said they're scammers, so he's not going to pay them. Right. It's not that, it's not possible that there was an eye on the back of my child's head. So they must be scamming us. He's not taking his wife's and Stephanie's word for it. I'm sure she he saw the eye himself. He just doesn't trust him. He, he, like he will not believe that, that this is, is my least favorite person that's ever been on either of these shows. <laughs> that guy sucks. Yeah, I know. That's such a jerk move. Oh, my God. <sighs> All right. So well, go I, was pumped. I was pumped when the mom got her neck snapped later in the episode. Were you like that? Yeah, because fuck these people. I feel bad for Stephanie. She has oh, a fucking so. jerk dad and a dead mom. <laughs> She's just going to live with her jerk dad now. So Gunn, he's going to leave. He's going to go find more customers, I guess. That's cool. Gunn really takes initiative. Gunn's really cool. Uh, and then we go to Wolfram and Hart. Lila tries talking to Lindsay, but Lindsay's going to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> there was no part of her. He's heading to lunch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're worried about dark because Darla and Drusilla. We haven't, we still haven't seen them. We heard, we I, I think we heard an update. They got burned. Lindsay says, 
Right, right. But we, I mean, I mean, we, we see Darla in Lindsay's apartment in this episode, and she's still dealing with burns. Right. Oh, yeah, he lied He because he's keeping Darla, of course. Right. But right now, what we know, that's all we know. And so Lila gives an envelope to Lindsay, which is, uh, I guess, comes into play a little bit later on. Uh, Kate update. Big Kate episode. I yeah. Kate was going to fucking die. Maybe she will. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, it, they, this episode ends on like 36 cliffhangers. So like we'll 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 catch back up next week. It's really True. a two parter. This is like uh, Return of the King. It had like five endings. Yeah. 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 So we they're we all really though. next week is uh, is an episode called Epiphany. And, and I feel like we wrap up everything that was set up in this one. OK. All right. Kate is being blamed for everything by the way i once created a tv show called epiphany and i really? out i outlined 145 episodes of it jesus christ how about that oh my god how many seasons is that seven seven epiphany that's a good name for sh- that's never been a name for a show even since then i don't believe so no somebody's gotta do that that's a great name for a show or a movie i, or I know i remember epiphany. around around the time i created that show stained put out a, a song called epiphany and i was like "Ugh, i don't want anyone to think this is a stained reference i don't think anybody would <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> so Lindsay, we go we find out that darla's staying at Lindsay's place he apparently found her in a sewer i don't know how that happened what yeah, was he doing I, I love episodes of angel like this where all like the recurring players are, are there Lindsay, lila darla drusilla and kate in the same episode yes please drusilla's not in this episode oh right no drusilla sorry where is she what is she doing? La- well she, she had was gone over on, to, eight, on buffy she had gone to sunnydale so, I mean, she might just not be back from Sunnydale yet. True. She's on the train. Um, so, by the way, they, but they don't turn into bats. They don't fly around, do they? No, just, we Dra- talked just, about that just early Dracula. On. We talked oh, about just it Dracula. versus Dracula because Dracula can do some of that shit. Of course. That was so cool. Mm. That's a cool episode. That's like a really I know, unique I know. episode. I agree. So, apparently what was in that envelope was uh, the review, like 75th anniversary right. review, 75th There's, year review. The senior partners come down every 75 years and they, uh, you know, make changes as as need be. Miss me with this storyline. I could What not, the fuck? I could not get, I could not care. The, I Give love me Darla. Kind of shit. No, no. I All I want is corporate intrigue. I know, I know. You're really into that. No, I really. <laughs> and then Holland Manners showed up, and I was like, "What are we doing?" Oh hell yeah, we got a Holland Manners. Yeah, because we learned in this episode, which does come into play more and more as we go on, uh, the people who work at Wolfman Hart, a lot of them have contracts that extend beyond the point of their death. Right. Yeah. What does that mean? It means they can they get like reanimated, I guess, by the senior partners, and they still have to work for, uh, Wolfman Hart. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. When, when he said, when Angel was like, what are you, a ghost? And he was like, no, I'm not a ghost. I'm me, but just dead. And I was like, what? That's cool. <laughs> that, was so, that was so cool. Uh, so anyway, so Darla, I don't know, she drinks blood. Does she Does she not like cold blood? She likes hot, warm blood? Whatever. Yeah, she prefers she prefers it fresh from the body, you know? Uh, Seemed like she wanted to turn Lindsay. He didn't want it, though. She I like hinting at it. I like Darla has has no patience for Lindsay. Like, and I, there's one moment where um, Lindsay's like taking a shower and he, and he's like, "I never get clean." Or so. Yeah, she seems to have affection for and him. And Dar- yeah, I know, but Darla like rolls her eyes in that moment, like, "Ugh." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Darla. She's one of the freaking best. Yeah. So we go to uh, Caritas. Is that the name of that place? Correct. Yeah. Good job. Hell yeah. I don't, I don't I didn't spell it right, but anyway. Uh so we go, we're here, whatever. We learn about the senior partners. And there's there's like a group of guys there that want to kill Angel. Uh well, yeah. Orange, there's like that group over there. Weren't you dead? There's like a table of Wolfram and Hart employees, and uh they're all staring down Angel. Yeah, I don't know. At the, at this point, I was just like, what what am I really into this episode? Am I into this Stephanie storyline? Not really. Am I into uh Kate? This uh kinda, but like the scene they gave her so far, I don't love. Uh, I was mostly, I guess, into Darla. I want, I actually wanted more Cordelia and Wesley this episode. Yeah, that's fair. Although Wesley is a couple of really great moments. True, true. Wesley, cool. Uh, I wanted more Cordelia. Actually, I'm, I'm learning. I really like Cordelia. Yeah, she's essential. Oh, absolutely essential. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, 
So we go to Angel. He runs into Wesley and Cordelia's place because he needs a book. They took all the books on their way out, right? That's true. Yes. Yeah. So, he, so he's got to go in there and get a book. And Cordelia says he should. He's like, she's like, I would say you should get laid. But we know what happens after that. <laughs> yeah, that's setting up for the end of the episode. I was wondering, by the way, why Wesley was in a wheelchair. I forgot. And I still he got shot. Remember. He got shot by one of the, the zombie cops. No, oh, I still don't kind of even remember that. You remember the thin dead line? A little he get, bit. He gets capped and then they have to like hide and they're calling an ambulance. Deal with oh, right. like guns, friends and shit. Yes, yeah. I did. The end of the episode. Yes. Because, yeah, he, he, I was like, why? I was wondering, like, why is he in a wheelchair? And then he stood up and he was like, like started bleeding. Yeah, he popped his like, stitches. Yeah, I thought he got stabbed or something. And I was I was so I really didn't know what was going on. And then they confirmed later that he, like he, the stitches and I was like, what did he do? Like, I was just so confused. I, for- I forgot. And then it yeah. ruined the whole five minutes. I, well, well, that sucks because, I mean, if we had watched The Thin Deadline the week before, like we usually do at the show, I'm sure yeah. you would have remembered. Yeah, it really threw me for a loop. Kind of ruined. I don't know. I, I went on a trip this episode. It wasn't that enjoyable for me. Looking back, I think I like it more, maybe. But in the moment, I really wasn't into it. <laughs> I like anyway, this episode though, a lot. A lot. Yeah. Like top half, even? I don't yeah. even know about that. I don't know. Uh, so a bu- bunch of cops. We sit down in a room with Kate and we're like, Kate, what's going on with you? Every turn you're going around dealing with the supernatural and ruining stuff for people. And we take her badge and we fire her. Ass. Yeah. Kate, no longer officer Kate. Yeah. We we haven't really shown her the, that respect and called her officer Kate, but she <laughs> she is officer Kate. Yeah. I, I don't think she's a bad cop. I think she's the one good cop ever also. Yeah, she's just attracted to these macabre cases now because she knows that there are things that go bump in the night, uh, but she can't really express that to the higher ups. Yeah, she's trapped in a corner, basically. Uh, yeah. And so Angel, uh, what was going Who's this guy? Angel ends up visiting some old guy and we learn about a Kleenac oh, demon. Dude, dude, do you, do, you not, do you not remember this? No, who was he? Okay. Going back to a previous Tim Minear episode, Are You Now or Have You Ever Been, which is the 1952 flashback that takes place at the Hyperion Hotel, um, Angel goes to see a, a a bookkeeper, I guess, you know, this guy in 1992, and he's the one that, like, tells him how to, like, get rid of the Thessalac demon. So, like, okay. now it, what this is, it's like, so they put that young actor in like old age makeup and it's like years and years later and Angel comes back looking exactly the same. And it's this guy, but he gets killed. Wait, he died here? Oh, Dar- yeah. did Darla kill him? Yeah, sword through the heart. Damn, yeah. She got both of them. That was crazy, yeah. actually. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so that, I yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't remember all of that, but that, yeah. makes, that makes it, it was, even more uh, sad. Tim Minear calling back his uh, previous episode and my favorite episode. That's wait, which one was your favorite again? Sorry. Are you now or have you ever been? That's right. My favorite, still five by five. That's fair. Shout out, Faith. <laughs> Where is she? Still in jail? Still in jail. Yeah. Last we saw her, Angel went to visit her at the end of the right. premiere. So we will learn there's like a this thing, the it's like a ring called the band of black nail, black nail. And then there's also this glove. Too much stuff going on this episode. <laughs> But so that's going on there. And then Wesley, uh, uh, I don't even remember out. what you're talking about there with the glove or whatever. I, I don't you know. Don't remember the glove remember later on Wesley or. Oh, yeah. Or I not do. Wesley. He, yeah. Yeah. He, he wants to take that down to hell with him. Like he, that's going to be like his primary weapon. I saw ultimately. Thanos with the gauntlet. Yeah. Like the sure. gauntlet. Yeah. And um, so but Wesley's hanging out with Virginia. I guess he got uh, his stitches worked on again. Um. Virginia can't take it. This life ain't really for out. This it's not for Virginia. Yeah, and Wesley reveals it even before. I mean, she he realizes it even before she does. Yeah, and uh, um, yeah, he he breaks it I off. I think she realizes she just has trouble expressing it. Maybe yeah, yeah. Into words, he yeah, really so, does it for her. He yeah, he like rips the bandaid off for her. So that's it. Final appearance of Virginia. Nice knowing you, Virginia. Yeah. I liked her, but all right. There's Virginia. Does she, she brought have, a lot she of a good career? The actress. Yeah. She could go on to anything. Uh, yeah, I have seen her and stuff. I don't think it's like an amazing career or anything, but, yeah. um, but this wasn't the last of her. 
Yeah, she was a regular on that show, Army Wives. Remember that? Yeah, and I remember she was, Army Wives. She was, one of the, she was also one of the parents on that Marvel show, Runaways, um, okay. with with James Marsters, by the way. James Marsters? Wait, he's in Marvel? He's in Runaways, yeah. They were together, like, in scenes? They're probably in scenes together. Yeah, they're definitely in scenes together in Runaways. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> um, all right, so Kate. Uh, get she gets home and she she drinks. Does she take pills here? I don't know. And she like uh, we cut we cut back to her a little bit later and she takes pills. But yeah, here we just see her drinking and and she has like a shelf of like cop like memories, I guess. And she like destroys that. No more though. Yeah, yeah, very sad. But so Wesley, he calls Cordelia. He says he's not really he's not he's not gonna make it tomorrow. He's not really feeling well still from his stitches. And but Cordelia, I guess she she doesn't really want to do it either. I, I think at this point they're like they didn't get money from that eye thing with Kurtz. They're having trouble pulling in new business. Like they're still running angel investigations, but they're like not feeling great about it at the moment. Yeah. But then Cordelia gets a phone call from from Stephanie's mom. And so Cordelia is going to go over there, but then she dies. She gets killed by some scary monster guy that we don't even touch on the rest of the episode. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's be- I'm telling you, this is like a it's a secret two parter. Well, the Stephanie storyline's a three parter. That why is that going on so long? That's a good question, man. They're 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 really experimenting a lot with the the serials serialization element this season. Yeah, R- suddenly, very like very randomly, but all right. So Wolfram and Hart. Uh, that bald guy, he's around again from that yeah. water episode. Yeah, from uh, Blood Money. Yeah, I like him. Want to know more about him? Don't really learn too much here, but he's in charge, you can tell. And we learn vampire detected because we know Wolfram and Hart. They have vampire detectors, right? That's correct. So we know Angel is there, but also Darla's there. And there's like a whole thing where the glove showdown, right? And we go out a window. Yeah, it falls out of a fucking skyscraper and survives crazy it's like a cat and we go to a commercial <laughs> and uh holland manners at down at the bottom that comes right. out of an elevator he's an elevator operator now that's his that's what he does really i guess so oh i had i had no idea that i thought he was just hanging out there like coming down to talk to angel no no he... he's he stays in that elevator this is it though this is the last time we see holland oh whoa i didn't think that well yeah that's crazy because last time I would have thought was last time, but then they brought him back. So I thought it probably wasn't the last time. But then, yeah, it was. I forgot it about me. this, too. But yeah. Uh, so. All right. Uh, we'll talk of the apocalypse. I don't know. Sure. Send some shit up. What side are you on, bitch? I don't all know. Right. So elevator like it went up and then came back down and then Angel walks around. Right. He, he was trying to get to hell. OK, he wants to, like, go to hell and, and on a suicide mission, just kill the senior partners, get rid of Wolfram and Hart. And that'll be a good death. That that's what I feel he's going for in this episode. And um, but Holland takes him down to hell in the elevator, and then just lets him off right where he left off because it's like a philosophical thing, you know. Hell, you're already in hell. You he, yeah, hell on earth. Holy shit, that's pretty mm-hmm. good. I didn't really understand all that. I guess. Right? Yeah, I don't know if it makes it that much better. I was just kind of bored, honestly, through this episode, but. It's you know. talky, but I find the talk interesting. I, I like Tim Minear doesn't really feel the need to put that much action in his episodes. They they tend to be more uh, character conversational. That's true. Yeah. So this is where we learn Kate took a bunch of pills. And I guess we get no conclusion to this. So she could theoretically no. be dead. Yeah, we'll follow up on that next week. Really hope not, because I, I always really love Kate. But we get so Angel goes home. Not, I guess he goes. Where where is Darla? Is Darla at Angel's place here? Darla is. Did he go to Lindsay's place where Darla is? What I I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah, but they start smooching, and we do it. (laughs) Yeah. Wake up in the middle of the night. Angel's screaming. I guess he has no soul again. We'll find out. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. That's the yeah. What we're supposed to think, I guess. But. I don't know. I feel like this turn from Angel I don't really like. What, the, him being bad? Like, ever since he left, yeah, like Cordelia and Wesley and Gunn. Mm-hmm. I haven't been as into the show, I feel like. Really? 
A little bit. I mean, there was that one where he went through the the what was it called? Like levels or something? Levels. Uh Oh, the trial. Trial, the trial. I fucking loved that episode. That's before he fired them, though. That happened oh, really? in episode 12, I think, or oh. 11. I don't remember. And I can't remember the last one I loved. I don't know. I, I'm I'm into what they're doing. I mean, I'm looking at it. Reunion. I really liked that one where they. Yeah, that that's where he fi- he fires her in that one. Uh, You know, Wesley and Gunn. And, and I actually liked Redefinition after, right after that, too. Right, right. And then whatever, Blood Money. Th- th- these are all good episodes. Happy anniversary, the Thin Deadline reprise. I feel like Happy anniversary the was good, man. That's the one. The the you were into that more than me. Angel Lorne buddies. Yeah, I remember. I remember. All right, I don't know. Not my best stretch. I'll say that. But um, listen, it's still Angel. I still love it. Okay, uh, and I'm excited for the future. I'm really excited for what hap- What's going to happen with Angel? All right. Well, next week is the body and Epiphany. Um. Well, who's your MVP of this, Angel? Angel. <laughs> okay. Runner up, Wesley. Yeah, that's a, I was going to go with Wesley. And who's your LVP? Lorne. Lorne. What's he doing in the episode? <laughs> He's the least valuable player. I disagree. You can cut him out. It's the same episode. I mean, I guess. He says, like, uh, there's a group over there that don't like you. He doesn't even really uh, help him out. There's no singing even. He I'll go with, I'll go with Virginia for breaking my man's heart. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. Mm. I love it. She had her reasoning. She wasn't cut out for this world. Yeah, it's true. All right, so that's... Is she, uh, still, is she still like... They, they they did talk for a second about her dad, I think. Like the first time we met was like with my dad. But does she talk to him? Wait, who's dad? Virginia. Does she t- still talk to her dad? Because he tried to sacrifice her, remember? No, he, she doesn't still talk to him. They don't really talk to each other? No. So now she has no dad, no boyfriend. Still got a lot of money. So it matters. Oh, yeah, she has money. Why do you need a dad and a boyfriend when you got money? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good point. So ranking time. I put it right ahead of last week, the thin deadline. I put it between blood money a few weeks ago and the thin deadline, actually. 30 out of 37. Not very high. Start me on redefinition. Where do I have that? Re. Definition. That's crazy. Ep- no, you have that at eleven All out right. of thirty-six. Read me down. Holy shit! The Prodigal, Judgment, Hero, City of, Room of View, Untouched, Happy Anniversary. I've got you under my skin. You could put this the ring un- Untouched and Happy Anniversary. Wow. So you have it eighteen, and I have it thirty-one. That's one of the biggest dif- or thirty. That's one of the biggest differences so far. I think. Yeah, definitely. Or maybe that one with the Hyperion Hotel, only because you loved it. Yeah, that's my favorite episode, and and you were pretty and I mixed on it. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a normal person when it comes to that episode, and you thought that was the best episode. Yeah, yeah. That's I the only that one special. Uh, all right, so that's that's Buffy this week. Yeah, that's maybe actually I like the ring a lot more than you too. Actually, yeah. read Josh's uh, comments and then I Josh. Gotta go. Joss Merlis. What did Joss Merlis have to say? Sorry, Josh. I will never do that again. Uh, so he said Buffy. Oh, my God. Why do you leave so many comments about how did he even do this? There's I know. One Buffy, Angel, Angel, Angel. Oh, and then one unrelated. Did you see that, by the way? He put together a whole thing. Of yeah, the, I did. Of the shows. I know. It's crazy. I'm going to work on it. How did he? So he thought of one and then he, what he thought of more or did he do this? Do you do this as you go through the episode? I, How did I, you get... I, I, yeah, let us know that, Josh. We, we, you, I feel like that's what he does. He just posts like, as things occur to him. Yeah, I'm wondering how that happened. So he says, Buffy, this episode had some very funny moments in the beginning, but really dropped off in quality after the first half. I'm definitely interested in all the threads they left open, though. Season five continues to live up to Dan's description for better and for worse. That yeah. robot's vacant smile was very Cordelia. I understand that. Yeah, I get that. Cordelia would have been a good robot. Yeah, but that, yeah, that's 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 right. It's it's another episode with uh, more going on towards the overall season than really a great story in an episode. I thought it had a lot to do about Buffy's character and kind of getting over Riley. I d- kind of disagree. I mean, it, I mean, you're right. It it was it wasn't like on the tier of Inca Mummy Girl. It was it was it's, <laughs> it's like that same kind of episode, but elevated to like the extremes. I think that's fair. 
but it, but I but I understand. But I think it had kind of a lot to say about about Buffy's character. Uh, Angel, the quotidian cruelty and indifference to suffering that pervade the essence of our being contain and constitute the darkest of forces from within and beyond our existential yeah. plane. Yeah. Well, Holland Manners has Josh feeling very uh, philosophical today. But what good is the ring if it just slaps you back to earth? I don't think the ring or whatever did that. I think that was just hell on earth. Like I said, I got to be honest. I don't understand 12 words in that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Uh, did that actually make sense? That sentence that he put together? Yeah, he did. it did. But it, I, I feel like he was trying to like lean into that, like philosophical on way the way the show yeah. is right now. Yeah, it was good. Uh, Josh again says angel again. Wesley saying this is hard for you breaking up with me has got to be a significant moment in Dan's love for this character. Yeah, you're not wrong. I don't know if that really did that much for me. Got to be honest. Felt like um, I don't know. I don't know. I felt like that 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 relationship didn't do enough for me for that to be as meaningful. Maybe. But- I guess that's true, but I I just feel like. Wesley is really strong in those moments. Like he he really understands himself. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I do love Wesley. But like if if Tara or Willow said that, that would hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, well, but, yeah, yeah. But or this, Riley. I, that that could have been that the oh, Riley breakup. Yeah. God damn. Uh so he says again about Angel. Hey, they should have named the episode where Darla and Drusilla kill all those Wolfram and Heart people business casualties that's great that's funny but how about this later on in the show there's an episode called habeas corpses hmm. now what does that mean now that's a thing in in lawyerdom the, the habeas corpus okay Ooh. But, but they changed it the habeas corpses i mean that's even better than business casualties. i know i'm telling but you that's so. they should both be episodes <laughs> yeah you're right by the way he does w and h w ampersand is that what that's called a h mm-hmm. that's what well, that's Wolfram how i do heart. it in my notes whenever i'm talking about wolfram and heart w ampersand h so i appreciate that uh jack bulberry says quick question which i won't hear the answer to for a while because i'm a bit behind my friend told me there's loads of comics authored by whedon which act as seasons eight through twelve plus full audio full cast audio with all the cast returning will you be covering those eventually i hear they're really good no um i know to which part we're not going to cover them or do they don't exist they exist uh i don't think they're really good um joss whedon wrote uh a comic book after buffy and he got the whole writing staff on there it was like he ran the show it was basically like doing a show but as a comic book and i read season eight and nine And for me, it didn't totally work. Uh, But he kept going. Yeah, I guess there's 12 now. He's he's like kept going with it. But I after nine, I was just sort of like, I'm fine with Buffy ending where it ends. (laughs) Uh, And the other thing doesn't even have anything to do with Joss Whedon. It was actually written by Amber Benson. She wrote this like audio podcast that's like an untold Buffy story that got all like the original cast members to do the voices. I tried to listen to that and I didn't think it was particularly good either. So I, I haven't really liked much of the post Buffy Buffy content. Uh, yeah. So we're, we're probably just going to skip that shit. I mean, if you want to read those comics, go ahead. But I mean, I, I don't won't. But go ahead, Jack. If you want, I to. don't consider them. Your canon. Has them. I don't consider them canon, but Joss Whedon does. So, I mean, that's something he Joss. Those weren't the only comics he did, right? Because he did those ones that were mentioned on the O.C. Zach was reading. Yep, he did a run on the X Men around that time. I think they referenced on the OC. Yeah, I think. And he wrote a comic called Frey, which is about a Slayer in the future, um, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, no, he's he's written some really good comics. I just don't think his Buffy ones are that great. Yeah. All right. Well, there we go. But check it out, Jack, if you want to. Yeah. Uh, And then Josh left another comment, leaving all those shows: season one, season two, all that. Nice. 